All right, welcome back again. Today we're going to look at part two, which is to create the C++ skeleton and to integrate it with our tests. And to give you an idea of what this means, I prepared this slide. So right now, what we have is this test, the tests are common filter that is written in Python. And we have implemented this class, which is our Python common filter. Now, what we would like to do is to use the same test to make sure that when we write this class here, the C++ comma filter, that it's doing the same as this one here, as much as possible. And this is what we're going to do in this part. So let's get started. Here I have the Python and CPP repository we've been working on so far that you can get from GitHub, and the link is in the description of the video. And as we know, we have the CPP and the Python folders. What I'm going to do before anything is to make sure that things are still running. So if I go here to Python and I do PyTest, then it runs the tests in our test comma filter file and it passes. Now, what I was saying here is that we would like that this test can run both the Python comma filter and the soon to be C++ version. So what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to install something called uh, parameterized. What this allows us to do is to write parameterized tests and we will see what this means now. So here I'm in Visual Studio Code. Here I have the test that we wrote for the common filter. And so far this test can only check that the Python command filter is doing well. What we're going to do is find the help for parameterize and parameterized here. And you will see what this allows us to do. So what I'll do is this. We're going to create a parameterized class. So this is our fixture, test fixture, fixture. What we're going to do is to say that actually the, the test kf dot kf, it's going to be, let's do this. Right. So now this module kf that is in Python is called Python kf. So therefore, one instance of our tests will run with kf being python kf. So what this means is that here, if we replace this by that, then it's going to be run using the python comma filter. And I'm going to do the same for the rest. So that, that, yes. Right. So this should still run. Let's check. Let me source my virtual environment by test. Woohoo! So you can see that I could change this to something else. For example, well, okay. this is going to run twice the tests because it's going to run one time with this and one time with that, which is actually the same, but twice. So you have eight, eight tests instead of four tests. And also, um, what kind of, well, this won't, won't work because it will try to use this as a class, but it will throw an error so we can see that it's doing the right thing. Fine. All right. But the idea is that now we can do this <coughs> and automatically this test is going to be run for both Python and C++. And then when we add a test, it automatically is added to both uh, the C++ and the Python uh, test suite. Okay. So that's on one hand. I'm just going to make sure that it's still running. Fine. Now, next step is to go to C++ so that then we can run these tests. So what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to have this open here. 
because it's going to be useful. And I'm going to open C++ in Qt Creator. So the idea is that now we can provide also in C++ a common filter, filter class that has the same method. So the constructor will be having these fields, there will be a predict method, an update, and etc. So we can get started. So first I'm going to create a file here, uh, C++ header file, common filter.h. Yeah, well, I could add it later. Let's be. I'm just gonna make this bigger, so you can see. And we're gonna have a class, come filter, and let's populate the methods. So we say we have come filter double initial x double initial v double x double variance. <coughs> right. We'll see what we do with that afterwards. We're gonna have a function predict that returns nothing. That takes t. That for now does nothing. And we're gonna have a function update that uh, okay, here. This is gonna have uh, measurement value and measurement variance, and also returns nothing. If I think, oh, yeah, and we have these these ways of accessing the internal states. So here I already see that I will need to find a way. I need to have a way to deal with the mean and covariance. So we're going back to our comma filter. Remember we have this amount of variables. So why not use const int num vars equals two for now, just for the sake of what we'll need because. We can use, of course, eigen and using vector type equals eigen matrix float or maybe eigen vector. Oh, let's just eigen vector float numbers and using matrix so it's going to be the covariance matrix for example it's going to be double numbers numbers fine so the problem is that it's not feeding anymore on the screen there we go so this is going to allow us to easily know what a vector type is in this case a two vector and this one is a two by two matrix because now what we need to have is according to this, a method to get the covariance, the mean, the position, and the velocity. So for the covariance, we return a matrix covariance, but actually it's a cost method. Return, well, let's just, uh, let's return a zero matrix for now, or maybe identity. We will replace that with a code, with proper code later. We have a vector mean, we also have const, return vector zeros, and the position velocity. So that's going to be double position const return zero, double velocity const return zero zero. Which of course is a very dynamic but should do. There is one thing I forgot to do, which is to tell CMake that this file is part of the project. So when I save, I can also get Clang format. So here I'll put kf.h. Qt Creator is very smart. Um, oh, it says that it doesn't exist. Where did I create it? Oh no. Ah, it's lowercase because Qt took care of <laughs> advising me to use lowercase, but okay, I can change that later. Okay, so now if we go here, you see that it appeared here. I save and now I get some nice formatting. So what we will do is in wrappers, I'm gonna include Oh, I'm not so good today. Okay, if that H. Here, if we try to compile, we will see if there are some issues, some errors in the code I wrote, which surely there are. Okay. Ah, yeah, okay. It doesn't, it vector isn't necessarily something you can parameterize. So then what we can do is we want a row vector, so it would be something like this. It's one column or something like that. 
Okay, yeah, sure. Static const int. Okay, is vector does I have a zero? I think it's zero. All right, compiled though. It's doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> so what we need to do is to expose this class to Python. And for that, we're gonna go to PyBind. So this is sort of how we do it. Okay, so our class is comes from KF and it's going to be called in Python KF. This is the constructor. So these are the arguments that the constructor takes. For us, it's three doubles. These are the methods, some of the methods. So remember the methods were update and predict. And these are going to be properties. We'll see. This is KF. KF. Update. Okay, and this should compile, or I would like it to compile. Yes, because fine. Again, okay, so it is compiling. There, I need to define two more methods so that Python can call them. And those are not going to be necessarily methods in the Python sense, but they're going to be um, property. Yes. And this is going to be a read only property. So, def property read only. And we're going to call it cov. And then we have kf cov. And we're going to have mean kf mean and we're gonna have pos i think pos and val yes oh no 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 okay i like clang format because it does that for me now compiling Vec is no, yeah, you're right, it's vel. Yoohoo! It's working. So, now, if you're confused, let's try this. So, if I go to my terminal, oh wait, and cpp, and my build folder is here. Let me source the VM already. So if I do Python and well, let's try I Python and I import uh, the module name is kfcpp, then I can do kfcpp.kf to create my common filter. And remember that it takes three doubles, so for now, whatever. And you can see that this is actually the wrapped class. And you can see that you have all the properties. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, yes. Okay. That's something you have to fix after. Um, but uh, velocity will work, for example. Yeah. And I could call update and it tells me that actually I need to give it you know, predict, for example, I can give it uh, some value and it will call which actually right now does absolutely nothing. Now why this fails? It fails because I forgot to tell PyBind that I wanted to translate automatically eigenmatrices to NumPy arrays. And to do that, I don't remember how it's done, but we can find this here, eigen. So we just need to include this file that is optional because we may not always want it. So I'm just gonna go here and include, I think yes. So I build, it's building, and once it's done, in here, yes, kf equals that, and now I do this, 
and it works and I get identity matrix and the mean should return zero because that's what we did. Perfect. So now we have a common filter class that we can call all these methods or all these methods. Of course, the tests won't pass, but they won't pass because the values won't match because everything will be callable. So what we will do now is to go to our Python code again, to our tests, and here the magic comes in. So I'll do a dirty trick here for now. I'm gonna add some variables to the path. So what I'll do is I'll first get um, well, that's, that's this. Because I want to get the path of this file, because then what I'm going to do, I'm going to add to the Python path so we can find the C++ wrappers. Carfile path plus and so what you remember is that the test is in this folder. All right. So then if I go to the previous one and then CPP build, then I get my Python wrapper module. So what I need to do is to add this to the path. In practice, I would do this differently. I would use OS path join and actually I would not do this here. I would have it already set up in some folders because there might be dependencies, etc. But, but for the case being, this should do. All right. So with this, um, let me just put some comments. Import cpp wrapper so file. Now I can do import kfcpp. Well, <laughs> so then it's consistent with this one. And if this works, then it means that I can write here that we also want to run the test for cppkf.kf. And this is all we need if I didn't make a mistake. So now if I run pytest, Okay, uh, yeah, it's it's this path append because it's a list Python. Ah, uh, oh fuck, well, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> because what happens is that in C++ I don't have keyword arguments. So um, in my test, I should make it not have keyword arguments. So that's sort of annoying. I don't know if there's a workaround. I will search for it, but uh, it's the first time I do this, as you can see. Um, and uh, let's remove that. Remove that. Okay, and I will have to fix predict. Uh, update also. So I, I agree that this is a bit annoying, but we'll go with it for now. All right, so what you're seeing here is that the tests were running. The problem is that, well, the, the error that they're throwing is that when they're testing the C++ common filter, uh, the, the values that the common filter returns are not what we expect. But the errors make sense. So the errors, are, yeah, it's failing when it's asserting the test conditions. So this finishes the second part where we modify this test so that then we can run the C++ and the Python tests in one single file. And also we set up the C++ skeleton. So in the next phase, we're gonna fill in what needs to go in these functions and methods so that the tests will pass. Next step.